first uh, thank you, Andrew and Man Lake, for having me here today. I want to say I'm, I'm starting uh, an eco project, and this is the first time ever that I'm up in front of a group of people explaining what I'm doing. I'm really happy to be here and excited to be here. Cross your fingers for what's next. So um, the project I'm doing is called Project Honey Light, and I'm going to take you through maybe like 15, 20 minutes of just the overview of the project, how it intersects with Man Lake, and um, you know, how we can all be bee guardians and make the world a little bit better. So here we go. So just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a business guy, uh, which means that um, for my life, my entire life, I've been doing businesses. When I was 12, I was mowing lawns. I was, you know, tarring driveways, cleaning gutters. And I was learning about people and about how money moves around and how businesses operate. And um, I also love nature. I spend a lot of time in nature. Uh, and only recently, in 2020, did I get into beekeeping. Only discovered beekeeping in the pandemic when I was looking for something to do in my backyard and uh, you know, things were quiet and I thought it'd be a, a good time to learn. Um, I've learned a lot about nature in my life. Uh, I do a lot of backpacking trips, spend a lot of times in the woods uh, and really just like observing what's happening around me. And I'm also a bee guardian and I'm gonna explain what that means in the context of Project Honey Light and how we can all become bee guardians. So three things I believe. Uh, I believe business can be a force of good in the world by creating jobs and creating opportunities for people to learn new skills and to grow and live the lives that they imagine for themselves. And I believe in this idea called a regenerative business, which is what I'm demonstrating with Project Honeylight. And I'll talk more about that a little later, but the idea is that it's possible to uh, make money and do something good for the environment for our, our common habitat. And I'm doing that through beekeeping and bees. And I also believe it's possible to live in harmony with the rest of nature. And when I say the rest of nature, uh, I say that because we are part of nature too. We're all on a planet living with other living things. And uh, it'd be good if we lived our lives in a way that was in the, the maximum benefit for all living things, not just human beings. So those are sort of the three things that I believe about this project. And the reason I'm here is I'm building a, a regenerative business model that describes a way to play this game on a large scale for right now in North America and later around the world. And what I'm doing is I am explaining business through the wisdom of the bees and things that I've learned by observing bees in my backyard and, uh, and doing that through a variety of channels that I'm gonna explain here. And I'm doing this, I have kids, two daughters. I'm doing this um, as, a, as a way to explain these ideas to children first. And, and I'm looking for helpers. I'm looking for bee guardians around the East Coast that can take these ideas and bring them to the local bee clubs and, and create a situation where kids can be paired with mentors and so on and learn these secrets of business, regenerative business models, and living in harmony with the rest of nature. And I'm, so I'm looking for helpers. And before I forget, outside here is a table that has a board game on it, and on that table is Bee Money, and on the Bee Money is a QR code, and you're welcome after this to go grab some Bee Money, and if you scan the QR code, it will take you to my website, where there's, it's, it takes you to a form where you could enter your, your information, and I will reach back out, and we could get in touch. Didn't want to forget that. So what I'm going to talk about specifically today is a book I wrote called Honey is Money, The Secrets of the Bees, a board game, and a business concept. And uh, so I'm going to go through each one of these things now. And um, the book and the board game are out there. You're welcome to take a look. So I wrote this book called Honey is Money. And it takes uh, people through a journey of how bees live in harmony with nature. And the, uh, the book uh, just starts in the beginning with the concepts of energy. And I'm explaining those concepts through topics in physics, like um, that sunlight is energy, and that energy powers living things, and that time is honey. And when you think about beekeeping and honey in the hive, is what the bees are doing is, is they're storing energy to buy time not working. And people do the same thing with the money bank. 
that the bees do with the honey bank. And that's why honey is money and time is honey. So these are the ideas in the book that I'm explaining. And, and um, you know, Andrew mentioned uh, the basis of this idea is to teach people about the concepts of money and business, but through the way the bees do the bee business of making honey and then converting that into a game uh, so that they can learn these skills in real life. The next uh, series is about, um, is about uh, biology. And what this series talks about is variability, which is honey grows on trees, which means that the, the abundance of energy in a habitat is variable. Sometimes there's a lot of energy over here, and sometimes there's not. And the next one is about competition, is that all living things are competing for this energy that's around us. And the next one is uh, honey comes and honey goes, which is about uh, seasonality, that there are seasonal variations of money in a business, and there are seasonal variations of, of sugar in a habitat. And the bees are planning for this seasonality by ramping up and down their workforce of the worker bees to maximize the amount of energy they bring into the hive. Businesses do that too by managing the headcount of employees to try to ramp up and down so that they have the right number of employees at the right time to get the maximum amount of money and make the business operate. And the last chapter here is called Moving Honey is Work, which is about what people think about when they think of work, which is moving things around to, to maximize and optimize the rate of money collection or sugar collection in, in, a, in a business, the bee business or a human business. And I explain these ideas uh, in the book. Next series is about psychology, which is about uh, teamwork and leadership and planning and specialization, which uh, uh, I'll, I'll read a line from this uh, about uh, specialization. is something that I've learned in business is a lot of times people are forced to do things they don't like to do or they're not good at. <laughs> And so the result of that usually is they don't last very long or they're unhappy. And I have a line in the book that goes, uh, every bee is doing something with movement short and long. The key to making honey is to do work where you're strong. And the idea there is to identify what you're good at and what you like and pursue that. <laughs> and just focus on that. And people are more efficient and happier in that way. And the, uh, the last chapter here is called Honey Talks which is about communication, which is about the bee dances and how they communicate operational information about their habitat, which is where are the flowers, how are the flowers, uh, how many are there, how far away are they, um, and how many bees should we send out in that direction to maximize the rate of energy transfer. My business background is the junk removal business. I own a bunch of franchises for 1-800-GOT-JUNK, junk removal company. And when one of my trucks drives by an estate sale with piles of junk on the front yard, they do a little bee dance and pick up the phone and they call the office and then we dispatch a bunch of trucks in that direction, <laughs> okay, to get the, the, the junk that's sitting on the yard just in the same way that the bees operate with the flowers because our energy is money and the bee energy is sugar, but we're playing the same game because like I said, time is honey. So, so that's, that's how that works. Um, next series is about economics, which is about uh, planning. And uh, the idea is when you plan, you can save honey. Okay? When you plan, you can save money because you can reduce mistakes in the future. Uh, the next one's about uh, storage, which is uh, stashing honey is storing work. What the bees are storing in the energy bank is work. It's sugar, but it's the work that they did before. The next chapter is they convert that work uh, called honey saved is time earned. They convert that work into time not working which is what people do. So people store money in the bank so that they don't have to work later. Okay, that's the idea. And then uh, the next one is called Future Bees Do Future Work, which is um, planning for the future. And the bees are planning for that by, the queen bee is, is, is uh, regulating the bee count by, by trying to predict like what's coming next. Should I ramp up or should I ramp down? And uh, then we get into anthropology, which is about really cooperation. I'm gonna stay high level here. And the idea here is that um, there's enough honey for everyone. There's enough, there's enough energy for everyone. And if we work together and cooperate on the planet, um, it's more efficient than fighting over resources. And so this is sort of like a, a message uh, about like how we can all thrive together on the planet Earth. 
And uh, the other thing is it costs more later, which means the longer we take to figure it out, the less honey we're going to have later. So that's, that's that one. And um, OK, and uh, let's just go this. So I'm going to play a, a short video. It's one minute. And this is the first chapter of the book. I just had this made. And uh, we just got the sound working. I had this. Uh, this is my book in space uh, in this video, for real. And, um, and uh, it's a, I had this, an artist sing this song for me. So here we go. Cross your fingers. So I have all the uh, chapters in the book done like this as a lead-in to the book for people to see it visually and then also read, read the book to their kids. OK. Next, I'm going to talk about uh, the board game. So the idea of creating those videos and the idea of creating the uh, book is for young kids to hear these ideas, like young, however old you would be to, to read a Dr. Seuss book or hear a Dr. Seuss book. The next phase of the project is for these kids to play this board game, which is the game that teaches them the business of being a beekeeper through the lenses of these secrets. And it covers marketing, sales, operations, HR, finance, admin, all aspects of business, not just taking care of bees, but everything you need to do to make the business operate. And I'll explain a, just a little bit about how this board game works um, so you can understand how this ties to these, the things that you do as beekeepers to try to understand you know, how, to, how to maximize uh, your chances of success. So this game is for kids 9 to 12 years old who are interested in nature and in business. And it's a fun way to learn how to create a profitable business, a regenerative business that works in harmony with the rest of nature. Because the beekeeping business is the perfect example of a regenerative business. Because if you don't keep the bees alive, you don't make any money. So basically, there's a, you know, there's a tie between those two things. The way it works is the players are guardians of the bees. And there's three rules in the game, which is take good care of the bees, which maximizes the uh, honey production. Take good care of the business which maximizes the honey sales, which is converted into money. And the third one, it's a collaborative game, no one can run out of honey. <laughs> no one can lose. Everyone has to at least survive. Someone wins the game, but this, this creates cooperation. And Andrew mentioned in the beginning this idea of cooperation across uh, bee, beekeepers, because we're all in one habitat. So the idea is that, that by cooperating, uh, it creates a situation where there's more honey for everyone at the end of the game. Um, and these are the pieces of the game, uh, uh, just high level. There's, a, there's, a, uh, there's a, a, a person, a guardian. There are beehives. There are honey wagons that move the honey around. There are bees that gather the nectar. And there's a calculation um, between uh, the, the nectar is converted into honey, and the honey gets converted into money. Things are color coded. The color coding matches the energy density in different color flowers proportionally, so it like, kind of matches as much as I could real life. And um, basically, uh, the, the gameplay is that um, the beekeeper makes decisions about where to put the hives, um, different, different events that occur, which I'll go through a couple examples. And the bees deploy into the habitat and gather this, uh, the, the, um, the nectar rings from the flowers and bring it back. And uh, there's distances and time and everything that you would imagine. The closer you are to the most flowers, the more honey you get these kinds of scenarios, just like in real life. Um, so basically, uh, the way it works is that there's a, a, a planning season where you buy stuff. You buy, you buy beehives. You buy um, uh, um, equipment. Uh, and then uh, the next season is the uh, nectar season, where the bees are then deployed into the habitat and gather the nectar. And the next season is that nectar is converted into honey. That's honey season. And then there's a, um, a season where it's sold in a marketplace, in a village, where the honey is converted into money. And this is the full cycle of what honey sales is in beekeeping. Um, and so uh, this, is a, this is a picture of all the game components that are out there on the table. And you can take a look. Um, it's real. There it is. And um, I'm going to just talk about just these four cards. There's, a, there's things that occur in the game that occur in real life. These are event cards. And um, the, this card is uh, um, called Spring's Reminder. 
And what it says is that a reflection on the fleeting nature of the seasons and the need for preparation, the bee guardian remembers past successes and failures. The result of it is, is you move one hive to, a, to another open flower, and that gives you more honey later. So like these kinds of events that occur, that you're making decisions, teaching these kids about the kinds of decisions that you would be making in business. I'll just read one more. Uh, some are good things that happen, and some are bad things that happen. So a bad thing is a floral distress. So flowers are moving further away, making nectar collection challenging. And the result is the, the, the bees struggle to find nearby flowers. And that reduces the rate of nectar collection by half this turn. So these are things that occur when the weather's bad, when the weather's good, when a tree falls on your beehive. I had a beehive tip over. All those things are in here that affect the game of the business of the bees, their survival, and the survival of the beekeeping business. Now I'm going to talk uh, about how, how this relates to, to Man Lake and how this can be converted into an actual business system. So to review, I have a book that, is, that rhymes and teaches little kids about the business of the bees. I have a board game that is the mechanics of the business of the bees. And then I'm going to create 10,000 beekeepers by uh, playing the board game in real life, which is these bee box kits where uh, Man Lake and I are going to do a collaboration of selling these bee kits with an integrated solution that also contains marketing, sales, operations, HR, finance, the things that are in the game and play the game in the real world and, and teach kids business this way through this business. So instead of a lemonade stand, it's a beekeeping business. And uh, the highest level here is um, to teach kids business skills. Because like I said, I believe business can be, can be uh, something good in the world. And after teaching them the business skills, create actual businesses in the real world with a little honey wagon. Little kids, with, just like in the game, they're, they're going to have a honey wagon, moving their honey through their neighborhood with their parents, selling the honey to the neighbors. Develop communities of the bee guardians and take some of the money that comes from this and develop pollinator habitat all over North America first by uh, partnering with, with um, charities that are doing this and, 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 and increase the number of flowers around. Uh, and the goal is 10,000 new beekeepers by 2030, 10,000 business owners by 2040, um, and having uh, competitions of this game in local bee clubs. So kids coming to, young kids coming to the, to the bee clubs and learning how to play this board game so that they can be introduced to beekeeping in a fun way. Um, and, then, uh, and then by uh, 2030, um, uh, the goal is to have a million dollars invested in developing pollinator habitat in, in, the, in North America. Um, and so objectives and goals of, of this, and this is how I intersected with Andrew at Man Lake. So, um, so here we go. Um, the idea is, is a business in a box, like a, like a kit that you get that has equipment, it has uh, marketing materials, jars, logos, everything you would need. And um, you know, basically learn the secrets of the bees while learning how to care for bees, earning money from honey, which is the business component, creating pollinator habitat, and um, keep building this for future generations. And what's important to me in, in my life is to leave something behind for later. And this is the way that I'm sharing what I've learned about business in a way that's good for people, good for making money, and good for creating habitat. Uh, I have um, uh, how you can help. Uh, I have a QR code here, um, if you don't know what that is, but out there, there's a, there's, like I said, the money is on the table. Take some money, scan the code, get connected. I'd appreciate the connection, and uh, we can take it from there. And that is, let's play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay.